Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums in the Co-Captain's Chairs for the first time ever on the YouTube channel, though they've been working together on the webzine for a million years alongside myself, uh, two of my most trusted people in the entire world when it comes to doing this sort of thing. Mr. Simon Bray and Mr. Stephen Reed. But the UK connection for the first time ever is on the same Zoom screen at the same time. Pretty amazing, pretty historic. I, I'm very, I have been looking forward to this for weeks and uh, the fact that we are finally here is pretty cool. So uh, I was going to say good morning, gentlemen, good, but good afternoon to you. It's wee hours of the morning here, but uh, you're already well into your day. Yeah, yes, yep. indeed. It's a UK Shopping. team over here. Absolutely. So uh, I don't remember who, I think it was you, Simon, that actually uh, instigated this whole show a, a while back. Uh, you were like, well, what about, what about Survivor? And I was like, hmm. I was like, you know what? Survivor is a band that I've always kind of liked but I never felt the need to own more than like a greatest hit set, which, you know, I mean, it's got all the hits. They got great hits and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, you know what? They don't have a lot of albums. I, I suppose I can go out and pick them up there. You can get them pretty cheaply. So I decided to do that. And then Steven and I were talking about, uh, you know, doing some additional things together. And I'm like, you went to Survivor by any chance? Cause Simon wants to do a Survivor show. And he's like, uh, yeah. I'm like, all right, there you have it. So, I started really listening to these albums. And as I was telling the guys right before we went and uh, started taping here, they have a lot better songs than those hits. <laughs> these are really good albums. I can't, I'm, I'm, I was flabbergasted by how good so many of these albums are. And I'm like, this is a really good melodic rock band. You know, forget Eye of the Tiger and High on You and The Search is Over. I mean, those are fine hits. You know, everybody loves those songs, but man this at the heart of this is a really good rock band if you if you like kind of like the the up-tempo rock and journey stuff or any of those 80s bands that had uh you know that really anthemic uh songs i mean this this catalog is littered with them littered with them so, lots of great great rock songs in this catalog i have to say i think they're the grittiest eor melodic rock band that made it big so you know yeah. there's an honesty about what they do really really captured more on the album tracks i think on the singles as well yeah absolutely and and you know like simon you and i have talked extensively over the years about you know jim Petterick and how great of a songwriter he is how he shows up everywhere i mean his stamp is all over this stuff you know he's done a lot of other things outside of survivor but uh you know but man this this just songwriting the vocals i mean both guys yeah yeah i'm not gonna out of the park so, uh, so we've got eight albums here. We're going to rank every one of their eight studio albums. Um, the last one we saw was 2006, uh, Reach on Frontiers Records. I don't know. That, that kind of might be it, I'm thinking, from these guys. I don't know. Who knows? I guess never say never. Yeah, I guess Frankie, only Frankie can tell the story on that one. So, um, <laughs> so we're going to start off from number eight. We're going to work our way back to number one. I'm going to have Simon go first, then Steven, then myself, and we'll keep going round and round until we get to number one. So, Simon... Oh, it it's, a bit, it's a bit like ranking your children. Because <laughs> they're, they're all good. You know, they're all very, they're all good. There's nothing, there's not a bad, well, I assume that somebody's about to say that Reach is a bad album, but there's not a bad album uh, amongst them. So as I said to, said to you earlier, I was changing my list every three seconds, but I'm going to go with Premonition at eight. Um just because it's the one that I've listened to the least recently since we've been doing it. It's the one that's grabbed me the least. Um, it's, a good, it's a good one. It's really, I think the thing about the band is that they're really concise. Their songs are all concise. They get in there, they do what they're doing, they get out. There's no, I believe when he's live, he plays like 35 minute guitar solos and everything, but on record, really concise, proper hard rock. Bam, thank you, thank you, Bam. It's, you know, it's a pretty short album. Eight songs, um, but some good songs. And I think the, telling the best two songs are the ones that were written by Jim Peterick, Chevy Knights, and Lights of a Thousand Smiles. Uh, they're, they're my favourite stuff there, but I like the ballad. Um, Summer Nights, I really like. I think they're an excellent ballad band. Um, it's just this very second, it's number eight. Tomorrow it might be number three. You know, just, you just don't know. Gee, where have I heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, already starting right there, I think our lists are all going to be very different, and that's that's a good thing, I think. So, yep. uh, all right, Stephen, what do you got? Well, I'm going to be slightly more predictable with my number eight because my number eight is indeed Reach. So, yeah, this is the most recent. This is the Frontiers record from 2006. You've got Jimmy Jameson on there. You've got 
Frankie Sullivan on there, no Jim Peterick, that to me is, or Peterick, Peterick, not sure which. That's maybe what's lacking on this one, although he, he wasn't really on top form around his time either. I think it's the produ production that maybe lets this down, lacks a bit of punch for me. I think it's the only album as well of theirs, maybe with one aside where I kind of hear other bands in there. Um, there, there seems to be influences from places that Survivor didn't used to take them from. It's a bit white snake in, in places for me. Feels a bit like Asia in places as well at times. Um, but having said that, the opening couple of tracks on here, Reach and Fire Makes Steel, Fire Makes Steel specifically, I think, really good, great classic sound. I mean, they did use old demos uh, that they'd done with Dave Bickler for, for some of this album as well, but it just doesn't piece together in the way that the rest of the catalogue does. Is it a good album? It's a good album, yeah, absolutely. Because as Simon says, there's not a clunker here. Everything's really good. But with the standard that is out there, this to me is, is number eight. Still a good album, though. Yeah, I really struggle with my bottom two. Um, because I think one of them is a pretty good rock album. The other is a maybe not so successful album that wanted to be really successful, if that makes any sense. Ultimately, I went the same route that Steven did and I picked Reach. And really the only reason why I think uh, Jim is kind of really missed here, his songwriting. I know he co-wrote, I don't know how much, a couple tracks, but um, it just doesn't sound as much like a Survivor album as some of the other ones. That being said, uh, it does rock pretty hard. I mean, there is, uh, you know, the, the title track, Fire Makes Steel, Nevertheless, Seconds Away, you know, Give Me the Word is a great song. Don't Give Up, really a lot of hooks there. Um, pretty good comeback record. Um, couple filler tracks, you know, it's a long album for the most part. Uh, it does sound like a Frontiers records. I mean, you know, we I think all three of us, we, we've all had kind of discussions in the past about how a lot of the bands that come out of the frontiers camp at times kind of sound very similar and this is really no exception but i think i still think it's a really good album uh, for the mm -hmm. first thing in 18 years it's pretty good so um i kind of stuck it as at number eight almost by default but it is by no means a bad album it, it, it is enjoyable rocks pretty hard so all right Simon, back to you for number seven seven uh survivor uh the album survivor um Again, it's a good one. Um, I did. I detected a bit of free in like somewhere in America, guitar, guitar wise, and then can't get you out of uh, out of my mind. It's a bit new wavy kind of uh, guitar-y kind of things. Uh, and again, I, I think this is something I wrote down quite a lot. Concise. Let it be now. Again, bam, get in there. Off it, off it, go, off it goes. You know, old towns talking. What a song. You know, really a strong. Um, debut album, very very strong for their uh, first first track, and um, I didn't realize until probably about twenty four hours ago that it's Kim Basinger on the uh, cover. It doesn't look like her, does it? I don't think it looks like her at all. Mm. But that's why I, I saw the same thing. Yeah, yesterday. I was like, really? Yeah. That's her? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Not that you can play the cover, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's, again, I, I was shocked when I saw that too. I was like, wow. That's... Yeah, could, again, again, it could move up and down depend on what day it is. Yeah. Good, right. good record. It's funny because I mean, that was, what, 79. I don't think many people realize they were putting out stuff in the 70s, right? But mm -hmm. I mean, just the one out. But yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely a good one. All right, Simon, what do you got? I mean, Simon, uh, Stephen. Well, far enough, it's next to me because it's also my number seven. There you go. Can't play the cover, but you, you can certainly try. Uh, but anyway, moving along. <laughs> Let's get our heads out um, of the now, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, it's way too way too early over there for for, for, for that for you. Yeah, my yeah. mind's not even, my, not, mine's not even on that, that uh, wavelength yet. Yeah, give me an hour though, and I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm... there you go. Kudos to Rock Candy as well, because that's a cool take on the, yeah. the logo yeah. that's on on there as well. Uh, they actually did a really good job of these. I don't have all the Rock Candy remasters. Yeah, I have all of them. They're fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I actually think that it's worth mentioning because something that, that you mentioned, I think when we discussed whether we would do this show or not, is that you hear the hits and you think, yeah, great band, great hits. I've got a great hits here. And I've listened, I just put this on yesterday just for the sake of it more than anything else. There's a couple of tracks that are not on the albums and, and various things like that. And I have to say, it really struck me how well Rock Candy have done with this catalogue because they've really, they've taken some of the, the rock and brought it right to the front, which it maybe wasn't on 
some of the originals, to be fair, and maybe that's why people think that they're not a great rock band, because in places the production maybe doesn't allow it to, to sing in that way. But with the debut, yeah, I mean, Simon said it, it's not really... They're a band finding their sound at this stage, I think. Dave Bickler's really good on this, but he's kind of, I don't know, reaching for something that's maybe not there on the later albums. And I think that there's a, a, a very much an element of free in here. Foreigner, I think, is very much a touching stone on this album as well. Uh, Somewhere in America is a great song. Um, Whole Town's Talking, that, that is some one of those tracks that just sticks in my mind. There's loads of promise, great energy, and as debuts go, it's, it's pretty special, it has to be said. Do you know, It's just quite different, I think, from, from what came after, although mm. there are kind of two years in the band as well, in that sense, sound-wise too. Really good debut, and the fact that it sits at number seven tells you how good what is to come. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'm sure uh, both of you will disagree with me on this one, but uh, When Seconds Count from 1986 is my number seven. Um, and again, Rock Candy reissue, fantastic. Um, yeah, I, you know what? <laughs> I knew, I knew it going in. <laughs> I knew it going in. <laughs> well, you know what? I like the album, I do. Uh, but for me, man, this is such, to me, it's like they were trying so hard to put out a really commercial hit album. Uh, there's nothing to dislike on it. I'm just, I'm missing the guitars. I'm missing the, you know, it's lacking those big rock riffs that almost all their other albums have. Jimmy Jameson sounds amazing on here. He's such a great singer. Uh, so much keyboards. I mean, so much keyboards on this album. And I like keyboards. You guys know I like keyboards. But, um, you know, Is This Love was the single that didn't really set the world on fire here in the States. Um, you know, Rebel Sun is great. Oceans, soaring rocker. That kind of reminds me of Journey a little bit. They at some at certain points during their catalog, they have that kind of Journey thing going on. Uh, Backstreet Love Affair, killer song. Um, overall, for me, it's a little on the light side. I think it's just it's a little too synth heavy, and it just seems like they were trying really, really hard to be that big hit single band. Um, but that being said, it's still highly listenable, still really fun album. I just find I like the other albums better. That's all. But it's still really good. Like like we said. All these albums are good. I know you guys are both hating me right now, so I'll totally <laughs> understand that. But uh... <laughs> Simon will never forgive me now. That's He's it. not going to speak anymore, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I can take it. I can take it. Excellent. <laughs> Shall we move on? I guess we have to, right? Yeah, we'll do that. You guys Please can. Do. Six, six. Right, right. Okay. Just to prove that me and Stephen are the only people in the world that actually bought Reach. <laughs> all the rest I've got on, I've got on vinyl upstairs. But, I, have it, uh, I have it too. All three of us did. All three of us did. Oh, excellent. Well, I think that was that's it, isn't it? You know, well done. Yeah, us. I know the three of us. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are lots of things wrong with this record, but sometimes, and I know I've said this before, uh, music takes you to a time and a place, and that's an album for me that absolute absolutely does it's a song that it's an album sorry that me and my elder child used to have in the car and sing along to all the time i mean there are there's some seriously weird stuff for this album i mean for instance jimmy jameson is the singer he's the one of the greatest singers of all time and frankie sullivan sings two songs like why uh, <laughs> yeah what's that all about <laughs> exactly but I, you know song wise i really really like it i really like the title track I, I really, really like it. Um, and Seconds Away, I really, really like that. I think that's an excellent, excellent little little ballady kind of song. Um, it's just an album that means a bit to me. I like it, and I do not apologise for that. You know, the, the drum sound, it does sound like somebody smashing a biscuit tin in a different room. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because I, I wanted to mention that. I think the drum sound yeah. is pretty bad on this album. Um, yeah. 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 And that obviously takes a bit, takes a little bit away, but I'm I'm prepared to stand by, reach, stand by it. Yes, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you should. If albums mean something to you, that's hmm. that's all it can be about, isn't it? Really, that's what music yeah. should do. Take you to a time yeah. and a place. Because if it's not making that connection, there's a problem, right? Yeah, absolutely. 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 Yeah. I think we've all got albums that we really love that we know maybe aren't the best album by that band. It yeah. does mean to say that you're not going to love that album because of what it means to you. And that's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So number six for me, 
I'm at 9381. I'm at album number two. I'm at Premonition. Uh, quite a step change from the debut. I think we're more into that kind of gritty AOR as opposed to the more sort of kind of, you know, rock sound that they were going for uh, on the debut. But it's still an album that, that rocks a lot. Um, Sullivan and Petrick seem to really gel and click on this album. I think that some of the performances here are really, really strong. Um, there's a real heart on this album. They sound like a hungry band, I think, at this stage. You know, they sound like a band that really were desperate to make it. Uh, and it comes across in the way that it hits. Um, and the highs are really high on this album. The, the stuff that's good is really good here. So Poor Man's Son, I mean, that's, that's a classic by the band. Chevy Nights, that's a classic by the band. And if you have a Chevy Night, why not have a Summer Night? That's a great song. They take You on a Saturday. I mean, there's, I mean, we're not even in the top half here. And, and I'm listing stuff that, to me, is just primetime survivor. So... It's number six for me, Premonition, and it kind of pained me to put it this low, but what comes after is so strong. So, Premonition, number six for me. Cool. Number six for me, 1983's Caught in the Game. Another strong one, really strong one. I got to tell you, the title track could be one of their best songs. Man, is that a great tune. Absolutely love it. One of the best choruses ever. I mean, it's oh, so good. Um, Jackie Don't Go, doesn't have to be this way. Good rocker. Um, ready for the real thing. Half-Life, I like the moody Half-Life because it's a little different for them. Um, what do you really think? And how about Slander? How heavy is Slander, right? Great song, great riffs. I don't know, this is a really strong album. Really strong album. Again, Rock Candy, get the reissue if you haven't, folks. Uh, I think I've got one, two, three, four. I got five of these eight albums I have are all on Rock Candy. And uh yeah, that's, uh, they did a fantastic job. Good liner notes, good photos, all sorts of cool stuff. And the albums sound great, remaster. But yeah, uh, Caught in the Game, number six. Really, really strong album, I think. Five, and thanks for doing that. Caught in the Game. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, and this is a reference for Steve, I feel like I'm on countdown and I should show my note, my working out because... Uh, yeah. Track, Jackie, don't go, slander. How heavy is that? Yeah. I, but I do think this is the album where they go from like you more of the Midwestern kind of rock. And they're just going towards the, and this might tell you where I'm going with this, the fully fledged like melodic rock genius that comes um, later. But, uh, you know, if you've got an album, this album at number five, your catalog's pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> good point. Absolutely. Good point. Absolutely. So for me, next is number five, It's Too Hot to Sleep. That's where I'm going here. Uh, this is a really good album. This is a really good album. Desperate Dreams, She's a Star, Tell Me I'm the One, the title track, absolutely fantastic. Um, we are in Jimmy Jameson territory here. I've got a lot of time for Jimmy Jameson. He's just, or was, utterly outstanding, it has to be said, uh, and could sing you a whole load of different things and just make them sound so believable uh, and just draw you in. Where this album maybe lacks for what comes later for me is the rhythm section, because at this stage, your rhythm section of uh, Drewby and Ellis on drums and bass, respectively, are, are not on this. And I think that Survivor are a band where the bass is mightily important. The, the, some of the bass runs on some of the biggest hits really carry the songs in a way that not an awful lot of bands mm. in this realm would ever really have done. Uh, and it's something, it was, it was only going back to this, that I kind of thought, what am I missing here? I'm not saying the album is, but what am I missing here? And that's what I miss from it, that little nuance that, that kind of you, you, you get elsewhere. But this is still, this is top-notch stuff. Really good, really good. You know what I was thinking when we when I was putting this together the other day and we listened to all these albums, I'm like, you know, Jimmy Jameson, what a great singer, right? Um, one of the best. And I was like, you know, when Journey was having their issues and Stephen Perry left and they were looking to find a new singer and they wound up, you know, hiring Steve or Gary, wouldn't it have made perfect sense for Jimmy to kind of slot right in there? And uh, I mean, he, his voice seemed tailor-made for a band like Journey. I mean, that, could you imagine if that would have happened? I, well, I'll be controversial here to say that I, I think with what's come after Journey weren't looking for somebody that had maybe quite as strong a character as Jimmy Jameson. Uh, yeah, that is true. Vocally, that. vocally yeah. absolutely. It would yeah. have been a marriage made in heaven. Absolutely. But I'm not convinced that they were looking for that. I think that probably tells you why the chap that was there before Arnold Pineda 
never managed to stick with the band because Jeff Scott Roto was not a yes man. Do you know? So true. Yeah, I didn't think that's, it was. that's just my that's my take. Yeah, I, I was more just thinking vocally at me would have made yeah. perfect sense. But yeah, no, I that's a good point. That's a good point. Anyway, I digress. Um <laughs> I'm going to go with Too Hot to Sleep as well as my number five. So, you know, you, it's interesting. So I ranked when seconds count number seven, and I was complaining about not enough guitars and too much keyboards and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, two years later, the guitars are back in a big way. And that's why I really like this album, uh, you know, but the general public didn't seem to agree with me because this album was a complete flop here in the States. Right. But I, I, it, to me, it's really good. Uh, She's a star, rocks really hard, uh, desperate dreams, memorable, big chorus, amazing vocals. Um, title track is moody, yet has all those hooks in it. It's rhythm in the city, has some great Frankie Sullivan guitar work in it. Cross the Miles was a, was a kind of a mild hit here. Uh, that, that was the one, I think, song that got a little bit of airplay. But for the most part, this was just um, kind of an ignored album. And it's just weird how huge they were here in the States, just not that long before. And then this comes out. It's almost like, no, don't play the guitars again. You know, we want more of the other stuff. Um, but man, and there's, there's so many other great songs in here. I can go on and on and on. Burning Bridges is another good one. I just think it's a, a really strong late 80s album. You know, maybe what they were going for, because of course, you know, the, all the big... Um, hair metal bands uh, were, you know, riding high in 1988, right? So maybe Survivor was trying to kind of play along in that whole, you know, subgenre of, of rock music. And, uh, but the general public, yeah, I mean, yep. Hair metal. They looked the part, right? <laughs> they looked the part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how did I not get the rock candy version of this one? I got, I just got the, whatever the hell this is. So I got the original Sony. Um, I, I yeah, I should have tracked that one down. Well, whatever. That's a story for another day. Anyway, back to Sot. Number four. Too Hot to Sleep's my number four. Uh, and I've got it on cassette. Ah, okay. Well, you you desperately need that rock candy release. <laughs> when, 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 it came, when it came out, I think uh, me and about, again, four other people bought that. It's a, it's a brilliant record. It is. An yeah. Absolutely brilliant record. Um, if you hear Desperate Dreams and didn't know it was love, and then you're not singing them for the next 15 years, then you don't have ears. There's something wrong with that. They're, I cannot believe that they were not massive, massive hits. So just really. I think it's an album that came out at the wrong time. Yeah. yeah, if they'd met it earlier, I think it would have been a huge hit. But um, yeah, the rhythm section sound is appalling, just shockingly, shocking, shockingly bad. I'm sure they're mostly machines, I would suggest. Yeah. You know, um, just no. But the, the guitar, you know, he's, he plays more guitar on this one, than I think, on practically anything. You know, he really, really goes for it. Again, mostly within the confines of the song, but just, you know, much grit, grittier is the word I used. Yeah. You know, guitars back to the gritty stuff, like from the earlier stuff. And I just think it's a brilliant record. Brilliant, brilliant record. And only number four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For me. Well, number four for me, and I'm reaching down because that means it's vinyl time. There we are. This is the album that made them. This is the song that made them. This is the song that, go on, Peter, you know what I'm going to say. I probably never need to hear it ever again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put that on a shirt one of these days. <laughs> we use a lot here. <laughs> but then again, to be fair, when I do hear it again, I still really like it. I still exactly. like it. I did it yesterday. You know? I played this album yesterday. I'm yeah. like, ah, 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 and I was like, I still dig this, man. But, but, and don't you, the second time round on that run, don't you, like, you wait for that beat, dan, 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 dan. you wait for it, don't you? Because that's a great tease. Isn't that a great tease? Just adding that extra beat in there where you think, ah, ah, ah. Oh, not that it is. I just absolutely adore that bit, I have to say. And I still picture, you know, the, the very manly video from, from back in the day. Oh, yeah, I mean, realistically, awesome. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Simon will disagree, but really. Yeah, there you go, right? Yeah, that says it go. all. Yeah, that's it. Here we go. You know? Um, I mean, this was really the only thing that they did over here. Do you know that they, they didn't really have any presence after this over here at all? Brent, Brent you know Hart I mean? reached number two over here. Well, there you go. It's not, yeah. I'm sta I stand corrected, but you are right, to be fair. Yeah. Do you know? But they were about flashing the pan over here more than anything else. Do you know? Yeah, no, no Rocky this, films. This, no, is no, a, yeah. this is a great album, it has to be said. Um, I, there's just so much on here. American Heartbeat, what a song. It really is. 
hesitation dance. I'm not that man anymore. <sighs> Ever since the world began. I mean, that's a ballad for you, isn't it? Do you know, it's just overshadowed by the song more than anything else, I think. Now, not at the time necessarily, but at, but now, totally overshadowed by the song. Um, but well, it's you take the title really, track off it, it's still a really great album. It's still a great album. And something that, that Simon's touched on a few times, I, I really think that you've nailed it with it, it's concise. They're all quite short songs. Mm. It's certainly up until Reach, they're all quite short albums. I know that most things were back at this stage. I mean, we're 1982 here. But you really are looking at albums that were like 30, 33 minutes. Do you know? Even by those days, that's quite short, that has to be said, but they get in, no pun intended. They give you a punch and then they go away again. Do you know, really gr great stuff by this stage, I have to say. I the Tiger, if this is the only song you know and you think, I don't need to know any more than that, just buy the album and you do need to know more than that. You know, great place to start. Good point. Um, that's also my number four. Uh, third album, third time's a charm here. Yeah, I mean, how great does Dave Bickler sound on this album? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I, I know we've been gushing a lot about Jimmy Jameson, um, but Mr. Bickler was the real deal, too. Um, incredible singer, incredible singer. Uh, I think there's a lot of crunchy guitars on this album. You know, Frankie and Jim, you know, playing lots of really good uh, riffs and things. Feels Like Love, great song, Hesitation Dance, rocks, a lot of groove. Uh, the one that really matters, killer hook. What, is, what a chorus on that. Children of the Night, Ever Since the World Began, Silver Girl. I mean, Jesus, memorable songs every step of the way. Uh, and it rocks hard, you know, for mm -hmm. such a big commercial album. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. It's great. And it's number four. Actually, it's number three. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, well, you were saying about some um, songs that you never need to hear again. I often find that's because they're overplayed because they're great. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and Brian the Tiger is that song. It just kind of, it builds, it builds. Wow. You know, even though you've heard it for a millionth time, you know, I, I never, ever go and think I must play Eye of the Tiger. It comes on the radio, or it comes on Planet Rock roughly every five seconds over here if, if we're in the car. And and I'm not turning that off. I'm sorry. It's just, just a great, great song. And I think um, on this one, and I think Stephen's right, the bass propels everything throughout this record. It really does. Um, uh, but so many great, great songs, like you said. But uh, and because I am a sucker for a ballad ever since the world began. Oh, what a tune! He sings his little heart out on that one, doesn't he? Really, really, I'm, I can't remember mind if it's better than the Tommy Shaw version because I love that. But it's, you know, a little bit of slowness in an album that just quite gets in and lets him say, "Bye, bye, bye." Off we go. <laughs> See what you can do. Great record. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting as well because I the tiger. I'm saying I never need to hear it again. But it's one of those songs that's really transcended the the generations because my kids know that song just as well as I know that song. Do you know? And that yeah, it's because it's played all the time and it's played on everything. And you hear it at sports events. You hear it as intro music for things. But it's just it just shows you how it resonates and how you can write a little hook like that, but build a song. And it just seems to, to touch people in, in such a way, do you know? It's very, very clever and very, very rare, that has to be said, do you know, to be able to do that. So number three for me, uh, Caught in the Game. This is Bickler's last stand, recorded anyway. Both him and Jimmy had three stints in the band over various periods of time. Uh, one of my biggest regrets, certainly with this band, is that they had announced a tour with both singers and were coming to play the UK just before uh, Jimmy's sad passing. So I never got a chance to see Survivor because obviously they cancelled on, on the back of that. But the prospect of seeing both of those guys singing these songs, oh, wow. And they were playing reasonably small venues over here for that because that's just where their, you know, their name is over here, it has to be said. Um, really sorry to have missed out on that. Um, but yeah, Bickler's last stand for, for me, caught in the game. Maybe a little bit darker, this album, than some of the other ones from Survivor. Um, but there's a great atmosphere on here. Santa Ana wins. I, I absolutely love that song. Really good. Jackie Don't Go. So there's heavier stuff as well, which balances this things out. And there's slander. You know, you're both wax lyrical. That's a heavy song. That's a great song. Yeah. I really like Caught in the Game. It's an excellent album. Yes, indeedy. 
All right. So here's the surprise here as we start, because my top three are going to be very different than your guys. Well, for, with the exception of one, I think. Uh, self-titled debut, number three. Um, probably, you know, one of their two heaviest albums, I think, but it still has that kind of commercial appeal, I think. Uh, Somewhere in America, love the riffs on that, love the chorus. Can't get you off of my mind. I mean, how cool is that song? Uh, Let It Be Now is big and heavy. As soon as love finds me also rocks really hard. I detect a little queen in that song, like on the chorus, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, Young Blood, good riffy, fun song. Um, love has got me. What a hook there. 2020. I mean, so many good stuff, on, good things on here. Freelance is really good. And man, what a Bickler vocal on that too. But yeah, I agree. This album is a little bit different. Um, but I like it because of it. And I think, uh, it kind of signaled that, Hey, we're a new band. Uh, we're going to go places. And, uh, and they, they really did. Right. But I, I really enjoy the debut quite a bit. So it's number three for me. Okay. Uh, my number two is when seconds count. Um, side one is astounding. Side one is absolutely fantastic. Re really, really, just what a great record. So many great, so many great songs. Um, I much love, fantastic. Man Against the World, Rebel Sun. That's one of my favorite songs of all time, really is. Um, it's just, just an excellent, excellent record. I noticed there are some uh, credits for J Jimmy Jamison on this in the songwriting departments. I've often wondered how that works because he allegedly wrote quite a lot on Too Hot to Sleep and um, Reach. Mm. Yeah, interesting to hear you rejoin that partnership, eh? Mm. But um, yeah, just a tremendous record, really, really. I think, you know, that's where they were heading with the early stuff. And obviously, I feel like we're all vaguely going towards roughly the top, same top one. Uh, just an excellent, brilliant record. Not quite the best, but brilliant record. <laughs> well, I must admit that to me it was a it was a toy toss, um, coin toss, toy toss. What was that? Coin one of those. Coin one of those words. Toy toss. There you go. Coin Thank you. Yes, it was those words, just or those letters, just not in that. <laughs> order, you see. So, for me, my number two, and I'm about to burst Simon's bubble. There's a <gasps> or yeah, look at that. You can see. I can see the hurt in his eyes there. Look. For people sense to know. So this is Jimmy Jamison's first with a band. I, I, it's funny looking at this because it hadn't really struck me before. I'm not sure there's a singer that sang in three bands with more manlier names than Jimmy Jamison. I mean, he sang in Target. Okay. okay and I've got to show you the back of Target. Okay. Then he sang in Cobra. And then he's in Survivor. I mean, he's, this is manly man bands, isn't they? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michael Klein is held up as the classic. It's, I mean, I must admit, when I started this exercise, I put it in at number one before it even went to rank anything else. And it was only after... I did the same thing. There you go. <laughs> only after listening to everything else that it slipped down, not even a notch, half a notch, something like that. But this is just a fantastic album. This is, yes, there's a move from that kind of grittier, harder rock into the EOR arena. But the songwriting is just fantastic on here. And to be able to tailor their style to the new vocalist was just quite phenomenal. This, this is a special record, that has to be said. And, and they gave Jimmy a really special set of songs here. Do you know, I, mean, I could read all of this out. First Night, Broken Promises. It's a singer, not the song. I mean, that became kind of Jimmy's song as well, has to be said. Um, and it's worth mentioning because this actually took me down in a very good way. It took me down a little YouTube rabbit hole because I went from here and it made me think of why I've got my Firefest t-shirt on here is seeing Jimmy at Firefest when back in 2010. And he came on and I'd kind of forgotten how good he was at that stage. To know that way when you kind of just you haven't listened to somebody for a long, long time, you see him on the bill or something you're going to be and you think, that'll be good. You know, he's got lots of great stuff. Wow. That, the performance from 2010, which is actually on uh, Tommy Denander's YouTube channel. So he was the guitarist that day. Who's he's a studio musician that's been on a million things that you've listened to. You maybe not know what's him that's playing guitar. And then the 2012 was Pro Shot from Firefest. Jimmy's just outstanding. What a singer. And he does these songs justice and he throws in some of his own stuff too, which is equally as good uh, on these performances. But wow, 
if you're interested, go and give them a watch because they're just absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I've gone off at a tangent. Vital Signs from 1984. This was the band's fifth album, Jimmy's first. It's a great, great album. Love it. Yeah, you know, when we started off and I said how hard it was for me ranking the bottom two, the top two was just as hard. And like you, the first thing I put on my list and I slotted it right in at number one was Vital Signs. And then as I started listening to one of the other albums, I was like, oh God, I think I like this one a little bit more. But they're, they're both neck and neck, right? Uh, yeah, this is jam-packed with hits. This is, you know, this is their classic album when you really think about it right um i mean i can't hold back high on you the search is over those songs were all over the radio here in the u.s when this album came out but the rest is just as great right i mean you got uh, popular girl broken promises i mean the chorus is on some of these songs first night it's the singer not the song i mean just top to bottom just really engaging enjoyable rock songs right with that melodic you know we we use that term melodic rock i think pretty liberally all the time but man that's what this is it's just ultra catchy melodic rock and roll and uh yeah it's winning top to bottom I, I i can't believe i'm actually ranking something higher than this but i'm going to so <laughs> so i was like no no sorry it's, it's like i can't believe that we're both ranking something higher than that <laughs> <laughs> You're both wrong. <laughs> should, we, should we not be cancelling each other now? I know that we disagree. I don't know. I just, I just don't know. No, it's, it, it's perfect. It's that little perfect. eject button is going to happen. All of a sudden, Simon yeah. and my boxes are going to be like, Boop, off, the, off the Zoom. <laughs> uh, I mean, Stephen yeah. and my boxes are going to be off the Zoom. Simon's going to be all by himself talking about vital signs. All the damn time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a perfect record. It really is. It is. Um, I think we've all agreed on that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I got nothing can be better. <laughs> I, I would pull it up for its slightly dodgy lyrics in places. You know, the girl I had last night, you know, it's a bit uh, already 1980s. Um, again, the record from a time and a place for me. Um, it's the first record that Mrs. Simon ever bought me. Oh, so, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Very good. I know. So. That that's definitely part of the reason. Uh, I'd say it's more of a pop rock record than anything else. You know, it's just great songs. And again, here are, you, you look at I'm, I'm just looking at the um, song. No, nothing more than four four and a half minutes. Nothing at all. Just and just just great. There is not a duff song on this. Not one. And there is. And I think I agree with myself here. There is no better Survivor album. <laughs> <laughs> Got to punch that through, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to be able to tell you that Mrs. Simon bought me this one as my first one, and that's why I can say that she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why I've gone for Flynn's second count, 1986, the band's sixth album. Yeah, Simon's right. I mean, side one does outweigh side two, but side one is just, to me, just can't get any better than that. Is this love? I, I mean, I put this album on a couple of times in the last few weeks, a couple of times more. Then narrowed it down, and I've played that song over and over, and I've sung it over and over, and I'm still singing it today, and I'll still be singing it this afternoon. It's such a great song, such a great vocal. But Man Against the World, Rebel Sun. I mean, the title track. I think this is grittier than than sometimes it's led to believe. I think Rock Candy did a really good job on this as well. To be fair, yes, there's keyboards everywhere, Peter. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. That's a fantastic thing. Listen to this. There's keyboards everywhere on this album, but they're fantastic. <laughs> you know, they so, do yeah. sound great. I'm not going to argue that. <laughs> and that's why we all agree that this is the best album. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the fact that, the, that these lists have been so varied. That shows the strength that we're talking about in this catalogue. Yeah. We've mixed up the singers. We've mixed up the eras. And, and I can't really argue with anything that anybody else has said. This is number one today. Will it be number one tomorrow? I don't know. Let, let's be honest. Because, I mean, these two, to me, there's a hairbreadth between them. A hairbreadth between them. This was a band that was utterly on fire at this stage. And really, I could just... A lot of people claim this was Vital Signs too, and that's remarkably unfair, I think. Mm. Um, you know, but a lot of bands had that kind of accusation about that sort of time when they had hits and, and they were everywhere and they were noticed. 
they followed it up with something that sounded like themselves and everyone, oh, they just made the same album again. <laughs> they sound like themselves. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Do you know? But yeah, it's a great album. And it's one I like more and more as I go back to it, I have to say. So yeah, 20 Seconds Count is my number one. Cool. All right, I guess uh, it's time for my uh, Martin Popoff contrarian moment here today. <laughs> but uh, I'm going with Premonition uh, from 1982 as my number one. Um, to me, it just barely beats out this gem uh just i guess because of a couple songs right uh i love chevy nights and even more so i love summer nights how is summer nights not a ridiculously enormous song in the united states i will never understand i mean that so that is just got hit loaded all over it um, but you know, there's, I mean, there's riffs everywhere on this album. And I think, uh, again, I appreciate that because I, I always tend to gravitate towards heavier stuff. Right. Um, but man, it's, uh, Frankie is just all over the place on this album. Um, take you on a Saturday, such a great song. Light of a thousand smiles. Love is on my side. Hearts a lonely hunter. I, you know, it's not as jam packed with almost perfect songs as this one is, but there are a couple on here that I think just really do it for me you know I, i've said this before and sometimes you can like an album that just has a handful of songs that are just so great for you and really do it for you that could rank the album itself higher than an album that probably start to finish is stronger right and i think that's exactly where i came from with these two it's like i'm not and, and simon you were absolutely correct this is without a doubt the survivor album but I still like this one just a little bit better because of a couple songs, right? But uh, but if I if I was to if someone came to me tomorrow and said I want to listen to Survivor, what's the first album I should I should get? Ah, without a doubt, I'm not even I wouldn't even question it. I would probably say yeah. this and maybe I the Tiger second, right? I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it is. I, I'm in total agreement actually. I'm in total agreement. This is this is where you, this and I the Tiger is where you should start if you've never heard them before or yeah. you only know the hits. That's what you should say. Well, start. you know why? Because not only are you going to give them the hits, you're going to give them all those great deep cuts, and there's a lot of them. I mean, we I think all three of us have said that uh, these two albums here, uh, yeah, they've got their biggest hits, but the, the rest of the album is just, on both cases, is so strong. Yeah, I've come back to where I started with, which was the greatest hits. Do you know? I mean, this is a great album. I mean, I, the Tiger, Poor Man's Soul, I'm not just going to read it all out, but I mean, there's... 18 tracks here, I think 16 of them are genuine Stone Cold classic hits here. And I would still suggest that that's the wrong place to start. You should actually start with a catalog. This is one of these bands where the greatest hits really doesn't tell you the story. It gives you some great music and some stuff you'll never forget and some stuff you already know. Yeah. But it doesn't really tell you what Survivor were all about. And that's fascinating when you consider how great these sort of songs are. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're one, and I was guilty of it too. They're, they're one of those bands that when you talk to most people, it's like, uh, yeah, I got the greatest hits. That's probably all I need. No, it's not. As, as I found out, I mean, this has happened to me in my life from time to time. That's why uh, I look back on my career of buying music and I'm like, I never should have been one of those guys to buy greatest hits collections because I would say in probably 90% of those cases, I would buy that greatest hits thinking, ah, just that's all I need, right? And then like after a amount of time, I'm like, oh man, th this is good. But then I would start experimenting and going, listen to other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but there's a lot better stuff than that. And I got, and then I go buy the whole catalog. So I'm like, why did I even bother? But, you know, I guess as a game, way to doing that that's not such a bad thing right yeah yeah if, 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 if ever you needed proof that the masses don't know what they're talking about that it's greatest hits albums <laughs> <laughs> but they are made for the masses aren't they not right so that's that's and, that's and i have some too <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it, everybody, ranking the albums of Survivor. Uh, so if you have come, if you have landed here thinking, ah, yeah, they got some good hits, but that's about it. Well, hopefully you've watched this episode. You've learned a little something. I certainly did because uh, I was also one of those people and uh, I have had a lot of fun buying and listening and getting to know these albums and uh this is some really good stuff so uh, there's not a lot of them and you can get them all it's just this little stack so uh, i want to thank uh simon and steven for uh, also doing this bit of homework and doing going through the excruciating moments of ranking this ridiculously good catalog where top to bottom really really strong uh and simon is still going to say that steven and i are both wrong about our number one picks but that's okay right absolutely <laughs> i'll never live this one down but that's okay well you you guys are never gonna live me down live uh you know 
so low on this one, but oh wow. No, I tell you what, Simon's gonna get a lot of love down here, Peter. That would not like that. Stop it, stop it. It's too early for that, Peter. Right, but in the comments, right? <laughs> yep, yep, that's all right. <laughs> this is fun. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org where you can literally read hundreds, if not thousands, it's definitely in the thousands of reviews from the three gentlemen on your screen uh, who have been at it over there for more years than I, I think if you put together all of our time spent on that web zine over the years, it's probably older than all of us put together, but uh, I'm just joking. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of great reviews on the website from the three of us. So please, if you uh, just watch us here on YouTube and you haven't checked out all the wealth of uh, great content over on the webzine please do we have 20 years on the internet this year can't believe it. it's crazy um but also follow us on facebook and twitter as well but of course we are here on youtube all the damn time so for simon bray and Stephen reed the uk connection and this little guy from the, the us of a thanks for watching everybody we'll see you uh man tomorrow morning with classic album rewind of course tomorrow night with the hudson valley squares each and every monday night and uh that's that for Simon and Stephen. I am Pete. Take care, everybody. Have a good rest of the weekend.